Um, you, there is a chat window that you can uh, talk uh, or post questions or um, um, communicate with us here. Uh, so I'm going to unmute. Whoop, I'm going to unmute everybody for now. I mean, uh, mute everybody. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and start my presentation. Let me just make sure one more time that I'm sharing my desktop. And we will go. So again, uh, welcome to the webinar. We're going to talk about the 2D drawing essentials and cover the topics of the TurboCAD interface, getting help, the 2D drawing tools, snaps versus seeks, 2D modifiers, and the coordinate system and work plane basics as they pertain to working in 2D. So um, currently I am in TurboCAD Pro Platinum 2017. This is our latest top of the line product. When you open up TurboCAD the first time, your desktop should look very much like this. Uh, we've got our pull down commands at the top. You can access any tool in TurboCAD through one of these menus up here. Uh, you've got a standard toolbar here. Uh, things like zoom extents, uh, turning on the grid, and, and um, uh, you can adjust the grid a um, couple of different ways with some of these buttons here. This will double the, the spacing or half the spacing. Um, you've got some of your standard views on this toolbar here. Um, all of these toolbars which have the little white triangle on them indicate that they are flyout toolbars. This one is your snaps toolbar. Um, underneath that we've got a properties toolbar. So if I highlight anything or uh, prepare to draw a line or, or whatnot, uh, this will allow me to choose which layer, the color, the pen and line styles, uh, and some other things such as hatches. So that's a properties toolbar. Uh, you can control your layers here create new layers. Uh, for instance, you can right click and say layer 1. And now when I draw a line, I can choose to put that on layer 1. So those types of things are uh, available here in the top. And the way the TurboCAD desktop is set up is you've got your drawing and insertion tools here on the left hand side on this toolbar here. And these toolbars can be pulled out and redocked anywhere in the application. So left side for creating new objects or inserting new objects. And then on the opposite side, on the right, you've got all your modifier tools. And so, for instance, if I highlight my line tool here, notice that some of the copy tools will enable. So if you see tools that are grayed out, it usually means that there are no objects in TurboCAD that it's going to allow you to do that next um, feature or modification in this case. Down here in the lower left, uh, portion of the screen we've got these two tabs model space versus paper space. Paper space is where you'll go when you want to lay out your drawing um, and model space is where you'll primarily do your drawing. Uh, we recommend that you draw at a one-to-one -one scale in model space for the most part. There's really no reason to think about um, what kind of scale you need to, to draw in uh, from the get-go because TurboCAD has tools for you to lay out um, scaled uh, drawings in your paper space through the use of viewports, uh, which um, uh, really allow you a lot of freedom. You can just simply draw draw at a one-to-one -one scale and not have to worry about whether you're going to be able to get that on your piece of paper or not because you will be able to through the use of viewports. Underneath these tabs, we've got the inspector bar. Again, the inspector bar can be pulled out like with any of our toolbars. And I'll just put that back. Um, the inspector bar is going to change based on the tool that you've got selected or, in, or using. Um, for instance, I've now got a polyline tool. And notice that I've got these five fields down here. If I choose a circle tool, the inspector bar will change based on the parameters available for that tool. So let me go back to the polyline here. Next to the input fields here in the inspector bar, again, based on the tool that you're using, you will notice that you'll 
in a lot of cases get some extra icons. So for instance, uh, there's an arc segment available as part of the polyline tool. And so as I'm using TurboCAD and, and choosing different, uh, different tools here, you'll notice that this is constantly changing in the inspector bar based on that tool I'm using, dimensions or, or whatnot. Underneath the inspector bar is the status line, and the status line is key for understanding what TurboCAD is expecting you to do next. So for instance, let's go back to the line tool, which is our most basic object, and look down in the status line, and it's telling me to find the start point of a line. So for this, for this I'm just going to manually click, click once, and now the status line says to find the end point of the line. So I can just click anywhere and draw that line and the tool will st stay enabled so now it's just basically telling me to draw my next line. So the status, status line is key for understanding what TurboCAD wants you to do next. Uh, I would get in the habit of looking down there uh, anytime you're stuck or anytime you're l learning a new tool. Uh, it will always tell you or lead you in the right direction. Over here on the right hand side we've got our XYZ coordinate fields and notice as I'm moving my mouse around in the drawing area the XY coordinates in this case uh, I'm in a top view and I'm looking straight down so only these two fields are are enabled and I've got a 2D drawing tool so uh, these are telling me where in my model space I'm um, locating my mouse and so for instance if I pick the line tool and I want to start it at a certain point, I can also use the XY coordinate fields to um, specify an exact point. So I'm going to hit shift tab and that'll get me down into the X field here and let's just say I want to start that at zero on zero on the X and I'll hit tab and zero on the Y and I'll hit enter and now I've got a point that's starting exactly at zero on the X and zero on the Y coordinate system and uh, then I'm going to tab one more time into the length field down here in the inspector bar. Let's type 5 as our length and a zero angle and that draws a perfectly straight 5 inch line. I'm going to highlight the line by selecting it uh, and in the size X field we'll see that is in fact 5 inches long. So the Coordinate fields are, are key for understanding where you are in your drawing space. If I right click, you'll notice that uh, I've got several icons up here, including the selector icon. Uh, anytime you're going to edit or modify an object in TurboCAD, just like within any other Windows application, you typically would select it. Uh, there is a keyboard shortcut which I would highly recommend you get used to using for the select tool and that is simply the spacebar. So hitting the spacebar will enable the select tool otherwise you can right click and grab it here quickly. Uh, there are some other popularly used features here such as your standard views, standard uh, top, side, front, and uh, isometric views. And um, so uh, I would get in the habit of right clicking in TurboCAD because it's set up for you to uh, be able to work more quickly. In fact you'll notice that the icons available here in on the inspector bar are also uh, features that are or functions that are listed here in what we call a local menu. So uh, hopefully you've got a two button mouse and can right click and, uh, and um, you'll be working a lot more efficiently when you get in the habit of doing that. Okay, so finally, last part of the desktop I'm going to talk about are the palettes. Um, I'm going to highlight my line tool. We've talked, uh, we've shown the selection info palette. Uh, if you happen to close these palettes, uh, the keyboard shortcut for selection info is control shift and I and that'll bring that palette um, back up. Uh, this is a, a very critical palette to get used to using in TurboCAD because depending on the the object that you've got selected 
you'll have all your parameters and you'll have the type of object listed in the selection info palette. So again, the shortcut for that is control shift I and you'll definitely want to make use of this palette. Uh, in fact, you can take these palettes if you've got a, a second monitor and slide that over onto the other monitor so you've got more drawing room if you want. Uh, if you want to put that back to where its default location is in the corner here, you just double click on on the top of the icon or the uh, palette title bar there. So now let's talk about customizing the desktop. So I'm going to choose this customize control button. It looks like a little gear. I think this is um, going to take me to my customize dialog. And there are several tabs here at the top. Starting with the options tab, uh, there are several default desktop configuration and styles in TurboCAD if you want to have the gray classic looking style which a lot of our um, kind of a longtime users have grown accustomed to uh, there is an option for that I'm going to just say no to that uh, actually put that back to the dark default interface um, and also in the TurboCAD Pro and Expert product, I'm going to flip over to my 32-bit, which is also running. We've got something called the LTE workspace. So if I look at my default style here, I've changed this on the 32-bit to use the LTE interface. This comes with the command line. Uh, this is a little bit more AutoCAD-like uh, in its functionality. So for instance, if I grab my polyline tool, I can uh, either grab it there or I can come down into the command line and say P line and enter and that will enable this tool and then as I'm drawing notice the input fields are going to follow my cursor this is the dynamic input fields and I get a little bit different uh, screen interaction uh, than I would so people that are accustomed to using AutoCAD uh, will probably uh, make use of this interface and uh, and be a little more at home uh, as they're getting going with TurboCAD. Some people also just really have the keyboard commands down and can be really really efficient when using the LTE interface. Let me go back to TurboCAD Pro. So when it comes to customization with TurboCAD and your user interface there is pretty much no limit to what you can do. Uh, we've got toolbars that you can place anywhere. I mentioned the palettes before. I prefer to have the palettes toolbar up and I usually dock it over here above my uh, toolbars and that way if I happen to close or need access to one of the other toolbars or uh, palettes I've got a, a toolbar that has uh, all of these things on here. So for instance the desi design director is a very commonly used one which I'll talk about in a second. Um, with this customized toolbar up, you can also go to the commands dialog or tab and you can actually grab any of these tools and put them in uh, any existing toolbar that you want. So we can put a couple of items here and um, you know, or you can create your own toolbar as well. So if I go back to toolbars and say new, I can call this custom one and grab this get started over there, go to com commands and start adding any of the tools that I want in that uh, new custom toolbar. And then the last thing I'll talk about as far as customization goes is I'll briefly discuss the keyboard commands. Keyboard commands, uh, there are a whole list of keyboard commands under the help uh, pull down menu. I'll get into that in a second, but let's just choose the 3D mesh tool and say, okay, I, I use this a lot. I want to create a keyboard shortcut for this. So I'm going to hit uh, Shift and M and try to assign this. And I get a warning saying that this is already uh, assigned to the snap of a midpoint. So I don't want to reassign that. I'm going to say no. And let's just choose a different potential option such as Shift 3. Now I will sign that. Didn't have a problem with that keyboard shortcut, so let's just test that out. So I'm drawing a line and now I want to draw a 3D mesh. So instead of having to come up here and, and grab this tool and enable it, uh, I'm simply going to hit Shift 3 and that's going to fire that tool up. And now I'm drawing a, a 3D mesh. So 
<clears throat> um, one thing I should have mentioned before I close that dialog box, uh, let's just see if it saved it. So, okay. So, uh, I just want to make sure that held because what you should do anytime you're making changes to your desktop is you should actually save it in your own configuration file. So, I'll come back to the options tab in the customized dialog box. I will call this my config and hit the save in button. That will add it to the, the available configuration files here in the load from and then anytime you're uh, needing to load or, or reload your configuration file you just click on it and hit the load from button. Uh, also notice that there's a browse button this will take you straight to the folder where all your config files including these new ones that I just created are located so you can copy these send them to other people uh, or reuse them on a different machine. So that's the uh, user interface overview. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is, is where to go to get help. So um, there's a couple of different methods for this. The number one method I would recommend you become accustomed using is the context sensitive help. Uh, we actually have a button for this which allows you to go to any tool in TurboCAD and click on it and it will take you straight to the online help for that tool. And uh, it, come up, it came up over here on my other screen. So there you have it. Uh, I went straight to the line tool and, and the instructions for the line tool by uh, simply clicking on that tool. So let's try a different one here. Let's just go with this sphere tool. And in this case it took me to a subject heading called 3D Objects and the Sphere tools listed down here. And in some cases the help will just take you to the topic heading rather than the tool itself. So just be aware of that. Let's go back to TurboCAD here. Uh, instead of using this icon and having to click on the tool you can also just put your cursor on any tool and hit the F1 key. So I'm going to just hit F1 and that'll take me to the, the help for that tool as well. So now um, we've talked about the online help. Let's uh, The other thing I'd recommend, especially if you're new to TurboCAD, is going to the help menu and going to our getting started videos. And this will take you to a web page on our website. And if you haven't gone through these and you're new to TurboCAD, I would highly recommend you go through these videos. Uh, they were done a couple years ago, but um, they're still uh, very, very informational and informative and will um, definitely answer some of the, the questions as you're getting started. Um, we do hope to update these here shortly. And then in addition to the videos, uh, I would recommend you go to our YouTube page, visit our YouTube page, where we've got a whole array of um, videos covering all sorts of topics. There's uh, a group of playlists that you can um, go and visit. And um, so I'd recommend you go through the videos here and, and bookmark this because we're always adding to the videos on this page. In fact, uh, I did this webinar last week as a kind of a practice and uploaded it, so I'll upload today's as well um, so that uh, we have it saved. And then there's a couple other resources for getting help. As I mentioned before, there's a list of keyboard shortcuts. Uh, this is the entire list of TurboCAD shortcuts, so you might want to print this out and um, have it at your disposal. Uh, one of the primary ones especially that you'll want to look at. Let me f uh, go back to that uh, as we're going to talk about seeks and snaps here in a second and what they are. There's actually uh, a list of the what we call the seeks which are the single entry keyboard equivalents um, which allow you to draw a lot more freehand and not have to manage your snaps. So I'll get into that topic next. Um, and then finally uh, what I would recommend you go and do uh, is join the TurboCAD uh, forum. This is a very, very informative place. Uh, we've got a fantastic community of users that are 
that are expert users uh, all the way to new users um, contributing and communicating on this forum. Uh, you'll see some amazing things. You, you do typically have to register in order to see the, the uh, images and files on here. We can just go to our gallery here and see, see what's going on here. So uh, take a look at some of the new stuff here, like this uh, scooter. The, one of our power users using the TurboCAD Smesh tools to um, create a nice little scooter. So uh, I would recommend you going to the forum and registering. And it's a fantastic place to uh, get information about how to do stuff, ask questions when you're stuck, or uh, need need some help. So we'll just click on that. Do that. There is uh, also a TurboCAD wiki site. I'll just take us to uh, TurboCAD. Wiki. Um, this is a very good site as well. Oops, sorry, it's actually this uh, W3 community page. So this is another fantastic resource. I'll copy and paste that into the, the chat window for everybody. But this is another uh, fantastic resource for uh, coming up to speed on TurboCAD. It's the Wiki page. And uh, I will copy and paste that into the webinar here. Hopefully everybody's uh, still with me and, and seeing stuff. I'm not seeing any chats, so um, thankfully uh, John Salmon, who's participating in today's meeting here, he uh, helps to maintain this. Uh, so thank you, John, if you're out there listening. Okay, um, <clears throat> so the next thing I'm going to talk about now is just some of the 2D drawing tool basics. So. Um, one thing to note is uh, when you've got stuff on your screen, you just want to get rid of it quickly. I can hit Control A and select everything and get rid of that that way. Um, so let's go back to drawing lines again. So uh, <clears throat> I'm going to again just uh, take a look at my status bar here in the le lower left hand corner. Uh, I'll zoom in a little bit so I've got some grid points here. And uh, as I start this discussion on the lines, I'm also going to enable my snaps. So what snaps allow me to do is to draw accurately without uh, having to worry about whether I am or not. So for instance, if I just want to draw a line, I can draw that. And now when I go and draw, uh, grab a circle and I want to draw off of that endpoint of the line or the midpoint of the line, I'm uh, using what are referred to in the CAD world as snaps. And uh, these can be controlled by right clicking on this word snap down here in the lower left. And I'm going to actually turn this option off because I, I prefer to not have that on. But um, effectively, by default, what you have are vertex snaps, middle snaps, center snaps, quadrant snaps, and then these two geometric aids, which are these dash lines that you get uh, as you're putting your cursor over um, existing geometry. So again, I'm going to draw a circle, and I want to draw it right on the end point of this line here. As soon as I touch the line, notice it highlights and gives me a little indicator next to my cursor that I'm about to snap to that point. So I will go ahead and click as it's telling me in the status bar to define the center point of the circle. Boom, I'm done there and I'll just freehand uh, draw uh, or I can uh, actually tab down into the radius field and let's call that uh, 0.5 and I'll hit enter to complete that circle. And now if I highlight the endpoint of the line, uh, notice the circle will be drawn exactly at that at that location. So I've uh, done exactly what I wanted. I've been able to uh, get the very center of my circle on that endpoint. So let me demonstrate that a little different way. If I were to draw freehand on the other side and just uh, let's turn off snaps and geos. So now uh, now if I'm just uh, eyeballing it and I do the same thing, chances are pretty good that I'm not going to uh, have that circle exactly on the endpoint of that line. In fact, you can see I was uh, quite a ways off. So snaps allow me to accurately place and um, draw geometries based on existing geometry 
or in the case of a grid, I can also come here and snap to a grid point. I'm going to use a seek this time, which is the G key. I mentioned seeks earlier. Seeks are uh, very powerful uh, tools. Again, you can go to the help and keyboards uh, list and, and get the list of seeks. So in this case, let's turn off my snaps and my geos, and I'm only going to use my seeks now for a couple couple moves here. So if I want to draw a line from the center of this circle, I'm going to touch the circle and hit the C key, which is the snap uh, seek for the center snap. I can do it over here as well and do it over here. So C will snap to the center of the circle that I'm touching and uh, draw that first point on that center. Uh, similarly, I can come down here and use the Q key for quadrant and I'll do the same thing over here. Okay, Q. Um, and let's go back to the snap settings here. I want to explain something else. So notice this in aperture setting for the quadrant snap. If I didn't have this on, what would happen is anytime I came to the circle and tried to snap to the center, uh, if I turn on the default or snaps again, it, notice the quadrant snap is always active. So even if I hit the uh, C key, I may not be able to do, do that. Um, but if I'm just using the default snap, the center snap never invokes. And the reason for that is because the uh, in aperture setting is, is taking over. And since it's not set in this case, quadrant snap is always enabled. So the quadrant snap is on. In this case now, when I uh, get away from the four corners of the or the four uh, 90 degree orthogonal angles of the of the circle, uh, I am then able to snap to the center. And if I go to options and desktop, I'll uh, give you a little more information about this here. So uh, actually I meant to go to preferences. So let me turn on the snap aperture and this will make this a little bit uh, more understandable. So now I've got a little circle which is uh, going to indicate to me where the aperture is. Um, so again we've got in aperture only. Watch what happens if I'm not on one of these snap points for the quadrant and I try to hit the Q key for the seek. Okay I'm going to get a message and the reason is because I'm not in that aperture. As soon as I get to that aperture even if I have snaps off uh, the seek will, will work and so there it doesn't work I'm not quite there I think probably here will work Q and sure enough I'm snapping exactly to the quadrant of that circle similarly I can do the same thing up there so snaps and seeks uh, are critical for learning how to draw accurately in TurboCAD uh, I would definitely spend some time. In fact, there's a getting started video that will explain these a little bit more. And again, the keyboard shortcuts uh, will have all of the seeks and snaps listed here uh, in this section here. So here's the uh, Q snap, which we were making use of, uh, C, which is the center. Um, you've got intersection, midpoints, and a whole host of uh, seeks listed. So uh, you want to become efficient at making use of those. So um, let me go back to options and preferences and we'll turn the snap aperture back off. Uh, there is a setting for controlling that uh, 10 pixel radius. I could bump that up or lower it, but we'll just get rid of it for now. Okay. Um, so again, uh, anytime you want to edit or know more about an object in TurboCAD, you will use the select tool. As a reminder, the keyboard shortcut for that is the um, spacebar. So again, if I'm in the middle of drawing a line and I want to select something, spacebar will help me get there quicker. And so now let's uh, select one of these circles here. So looking at the selection info palette, I see that I've got some parameters for my circle. Let's bump, uh, uh, make an adjustment here because it's selected and highlighted. I'm able to edit this. So we'll make this uh, 0.75. I'll hit enter. Uh, and because I need to do this in a circular fashion, I've got to actually do both of these here. Otherwise, I'll create an oval. 
Um, and also uh, a key thing with TurboCAD is understanding uh, what you're looking at when you select an item. So for instance, uh, in my line here, I've got a couple of uh, blue, what we call nodes. These are indicated by these blue rectangles on the end. These are the end points that, that I drew when I, uh, or established when I drew the line. We've got this green, what we call rotation handle, which I can pick up and grab and notice that the inspector bar down here is giving me the details about what that angle is. And I can, of course, hit the tab key and determine an angle uh, precisely by typing in a value like 45, hit enter, and now that line's at a 45 degree angle. Uh, I'll undo that. Control Z is the sh keyboard shortcut for that. So let's put that back where it was. If I want to lengthen the line or uh, object, I can do this manually uh, by grabbing these endpoints. And then finally, the reference point. This is the yellow point in the center of any selected object in TurboCAD. And this is really key to understanding uh, where you are or where your object is in space, in the, in the paper space or model space. Uh, and you can also click on this one time and grab it and pick it up to move the object. So let's uh, just place it here. I'm going to snap to the grid point with the G key. And now that reference point is is exactly on that grid point. Uh, I can click one time. I don't have to click and drag with TurboCAD when I'm moving stuff, which is nice. I can just click one time. And now I'm just moving my cursor without holding any buttons down. And I will uh, place this. Let's place this in, in the midpoint of this line here. So AM key for midpoint gets that right in the center of this line. So if I click on this line, you see that the reference points for these two lines are now intersecting. And another nice thing about our reference point is you can actually pick it up and move it. So let's uh, hit the D key. And I'm going to put the reference point at this end point of this uh, horizontal line here by hitting the V key, V for vertex snap. And uh, now I can pick that. And let's place that on the midpoint of this line. So I'm going to hit the M key as I'm touching this line, which is the midpoint snap. My snaps are off. I can put those on and do the same thing. If I turn the snaps on here, notice the midpoint indicator does the same thing as the seek. So depending on the object that you've got, let's uh, maybe draw a rectangle here. And hit shift to enable the selector. A uh, little bit different. Uh, selection nodes. In this case, I've got these nodes on the ends, which allow me to manually resize based on this bounding box. And again, if I want to pick up the reference point and put it in the middle of that point, and then drag it over here and snap it to the end point there, I can do that. So you can kind of see how the reference point uh, really enables you to maintain your accuracy when you're drawing in TurboCAD. And uh, then any time you want to put the reference point back, you can right click and say default reference point. There's the keyboard shortcut for picking it up, which is D. Putting it back is uh, right click and hit default reference point. OK, so a um, couple of other uh, things to note. Um, with the 2D drawing tools, uh, I will uh, quickly show you some of the arc tools, uh, spline tools uh, as well. So arcs, we've kind of looked at circles. Uh, there's a whole host of arc tools. In this case, I'll just choose uh, center radius. The arc tools, I'm going to snap here to the midpoint of this rectangle and to this grid point. And the arc tools work in a counterclockwise fashion, so I'm going to hit uh, hit the Q key here. Whoop. Uh, actually, I'll just hold my shift key down, uh, which is something else I forgot to mention when drawing lines. Uh, and I'll come over here and hold shift. Uh, when drawing lines or other objects, I should have mentioned this earlier, is uh, if I click to this grid point here, if I hit the shift key down, I'm going to lock my 
drawing angle uh, to one of the orthogonal angles. So in this case, if we look down in the inspector bar when I do that, it's going to lock it to zero. Put it up here, it's locked at 90. Put it over here, it's locked at 180. And down here, it will be 270. So hitting the shift key as you're drawing or moving objects will generally uh, lock it into a orthogonal position. Similarly, if I wanted to do something like uh, make a copy of this rectangle, I can hit the control key with the shift key, and that's going to lock it into that orthogonal angle. So uh, the use of the shift key uh, in any direction, any of the four directions, is going to um, allow me to maintain the orthogonal values associated with that object. So that's uh, another thing to make use of. Um, so talked a little bit about the how the arc tool works. Now let me just briefly go over a couple of the spline tools. We've got uh, spline by control points, um, Bezier's, and uh, um, some other stuff there. Uh, so let's just play around with this spline tool for a second. And I want to show you the difference on the spline tool. So uh, because the nodes will be displaced, I'm going to right click. Um, in this case, I'm going to use the edit tool, uh, which is a little bit different in that uh, the edit tool will give me the actual node points. Uh, in this case, uh, when I move these nodes, the, the curvature of the spline will, will change. Okay. <coughs> and uh, let, let's do the same thing. So this is the edit tool now. Again, it's a slightly different um, selection method. We had the select tool earlier. This is the edit tool. In the case of the edit tool, I'm going to get my nodes. And in, in this case, I've got a arc selected. So I can actually uh, pick up this node here and change the angle of my arc. So in the case of the spline here, again, I can grab these points. And I can also snap to uh, grid points, I believe, with these. So we'll just snap it to that grid point, pull this one down, snap it to this grid point. And because it's a spline, the, the reference points or the node points are, are slightly displaced as opposed to a rectangle where they're um, on the four corners, the, the endpoints. And I can pick these up individually, move them snap them to grids or whatnot. So when it comes to uh, editing your geometry, you'll want to make use of this edit tool. Uh, let me give you a couple of other examples here of that. Um, let's uh, actually finish out the um, spline tools. Another popular uh, curve tool is the Bezier curve. Uh, this is a very nice tool. And you'll see what happens here as I snap to a couple grid points and right click and finish and now let's grab the edit tool for this and you'll see that we get not only uh, the node points for the the curves but we get these little rotation handles which let me control the curvature of the Bezier curve uh, more precisely and um, Finally, I'm going to talk about the polyline tool. This is uh, one of the more popular tools in TurboCAD. So uh, let's just come over here. I'm going to snap to a grid point here, snap to a grid point here. I can right click and look at my local menu. And now we can choose an arc segment. And again, I'll hold my shift key down. I think no, that doesn't do it. Let me turn on my geos here. And now say we want to put that at exactly a 180 angle so the geometric aid is going to help me out with that can come over here and do the same thing and one more time over here so we got something like that I'll right click go back to the line segment I could have come down to the inspector bar and, and grab the line segment here as well but uh, we'll do that and let's line it up here so we'll just come over here line that up. And on the final step, I'm going to hit the close button here. So let's select this. And this time, uh, I'm going to use 
this edit tool. Uh, it's the same as, as choosing this, but in this case, uh, if I've already got a line selected and I want to go straight to the edit functionality, I can do that this way rather than selecting the edit tool and reselecting the line. So again, we've got our uh, node points for the line segments, and we've also got these green arc segment uh, points, which can be manipulated by clicking on them and moving them. Okay, I'll just uh, undo a couple times and set that back. And um, with the edit tool, you can also add and delete nodes. So in this case, if I right click here and say add node, uh, notice insert arc is not uh, available yet. So I'm going to just add a node there. And once I pull this out and create an angle uh, between these points here, I can right click and now I can add an arc segment. So the arc segment can be added, but it does require that you uh, have an angle in your two, two adjoining lines segments. So again, we'll do the same thing over here. Add node. And instead of adding it that way, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut of the control key. So the control key acts as a toggle to help me add and remove nodes. If I hit control again and my left mouse button, it deletes it. So you should practice uh, adding and deleting nodes this way. So let's just add that again. And this time we're going to move it. And this time let's uh, use the snap and, and snap it precisely to a point. Or uh, what we could do is look down in the XYZ fields here and, and actually hit Shift Tab. And let's put that precisely at 5 and 9 and then hit Enter. And now, uh, well, wouldn't you know, that's the <laughs> that was straight. Uh, let's do a little different value here. Uh, shift, let's do um, 4.5 and uh, da, 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 da. Uh, maybe uh, 9.5. So we'll go 9.5 and boom, that's going to take it up to that um, exact coordinate. So let me undo that and just make sure you understand that. So clicking here, I can move manually, I can snap to a grid point or whatever, or I can use the XYZ coordinate fields and type in a precise location. So let's do this time. We'll do four. You can see four up here and maybe uh, 9.25. So shift tab, do four and 9.25 and enter and boom, there you go. It's going to be exactly at that location. So one other thing about the polyline tools, a lot of people will um, make use of these for CNC and other manufacturing um, types of applications. And one of the keys to, to the polyline is that it, it acts differently when it's closed as, to, as opposed to when it's not closed. So I am going to use something called the um, pick point hatch here. And let's just see if this hatches. So click inside uh, that that area or on the line and sure enough this hatches and let's just um, select this polyline and this time we're gonna break it we're gonna explode it so this is what happens a lot uh, this is very commonly um, reported problem that people have and it's it's easy to fix um, but I want to make sure you understand why it happens and and so forth. So uh, a lot of times with shapes people will use a combination of line or arc and spline segments uh, and so in this case we've exploded this and now we instead of having one contiguous uh, polyline we've got a series of arcs and lines. So <clears throat> there is a way to join these which I'll discuss in a second but I'm going to purposely break this so let's um, go to the edit tool here and Imagine if you were not using snaps. In fact, I need to turn snaps off in this case. Uh, imagine if you were not using snaps and uh, had to, um, or were trying to draw this. And uh, let me actually explode one more time so we got these line segments. And now uh, when I do this, pull this one down a little bit. So what we see a lot is people just kind of eyeballing, not using their snaps, and and coming up with a geometry like this, where if you're not careful, um, it will look like you uh, are 
uh, you know have a have a polyline that's closed and then you can come and actually use the join polyline tool and join all these segments together and <coughs> uh, we'll hit finish here and now you'll see looking at selection info that this is a polyline so let's go back to the pick point hatch and try that same thing again we're clicking on the on the polyline but nothing is happening so the reason is because of this breakage here and the other way you'll see this if I go to an isometric view and extrude this object so it's a 3D object and then I render this you're gonna see a similar type of thing where uh, it's not hollow in the center okay or I mean it's hollow in the center so it's not it's not a solid object or surface and again the reason behind that is that uh, you don't have a closed polyline. So let's undo that. And fortunately, there's an easy way to fix this in TurboCAD. I'm going to go back to World Plan View. And the way you can do this is you use the Edit tool. And again, I'm going to delete one of these nodes here. And this time I will select this and say Close. And boom, there it's closed now. Let's try the pick point hatch. Hey, look at that. It works, no problem. I'll uh, go back to the simple extrude and let's see what happens here when I extrude this. Sure enough, now I've got a nice solid object. So you can see how the edit tool um, and, and your use of knowing that, that objects need to be closed to be extruded or hatched uh, can be very valuable. It's a very common question uh, to our support team from users that are just uh, getting going or, or fairly new to TurboCAD. <clears throat> okay, so the last thing I'm going to cover are some of the modifier tools. And I'm also going to couple that with uh, one of the major problems people have when using some of the modifiers. So let's just take these two objects here and let's right click here in a blank area and pull up my modifier tools. So they're a little more accessible here. Okay, and um, first one I'm going to start with is the trim tool because this is a very commonly used tool. And uh, basically, if I look in down here and uh, select my cutting edges, uh, and I'll finish selecting the cutting edges, uh, I can then trim that. Uh, we do actually have two trim tools. This is the more AutoCAD-based trim tool, which does require you uh, use that finish option um, and then we've got the object trim and this is a little more uh, easy in my opinion uh, because it doesn't require you to use that finish when you're done selecting the cutting edges so let's just put a couple more objects here okay so this time I'm going to use the object trim and again I can define cutting edges um, by uh, either singularly doing that or if I undo that uh, notice I get the little plus minus indicator and this really works as a toggle for um, allowing me to choose multiple items or if it's already selected I can deselect it as well uh, I should be able to at least uh, maybe it's not letting me on this um, certainly in the case of selecting objects you can do that in fact let me show you that because I didn't earlier um, so it should let me deselect any selected objects or select any objects that are not selected and um, let's just go ahead and try this trim again so choose a couple of cutting edges here like these two and now anything that's touching both of those edges I can trim so the trim tools are nice um, We've got uh, split entity tools. Um, this allows me to split an entity. Let's just put that circle back. Uh, and I can define where I want my splits to occur. So that should be a separate segment that I can click and delete. And, um, and then we've got a couple of other tools, uh, fillets and chamfers. These are really nice tools as well. Again, I'll select the 
tool and then refer to the inspector bar for my instructions and notice I've got a way to define a radius so let's put that at 0.5 hit enter and now when I come here I'm going to create a nice 5 inch radii um, one of the nice things about our fillet tool and chamfer tools is that you can use them multiple times so let's say I didn't mean to do that quite so dramatically let's put that at 0.25 I'll hit enter and I'll refill at those same edges and it'll actually adjust it to 0.25 so that's nice and if I use the radius dimension tool we see that's exactly at 0.25 Uh, Meet Two Lines is another nice tool. Uh, this is a very f commonly used tool. It will find the intersections of tools. Very powerful. And in some cases, I believe it will actually uh, work as a trimming mechanism. So if I want to meet two lines or trim two lines in one uh, swoop, let's see, actually, will it work on that? No, I didn't think so. <coughs> So modifier tools, um, again, anytime you're using a modifier tool, look down in the inspector bar, it will tell you uh, what it's expecting next. Um, I mentioned earlier that the uh, work planes were going to be discussed, so let me talk about those just ever so briefly. Let's go back and uh, get it to here. Since TurboCAD is a 2D, 3D application, there are cases where uh, if I take my 3D selector and I uh, accidentally move this or have accidentally drawn this on a, a different plane, let's even put that at uh, 2 point or 0.25 on the z-axis. Now I try to use my trim tool. Uh, here's another commonly re uh, requested support call or issue. Uh, well, I'm actually surprised that worked. Uh, it wasn't supposed to work. It was supposed to Maybe I didn't hit enter. Let's point 0.25, point 0.24, and enter. Yes. And let's try that same thing. And I get an invalid coordinate system, and that's because the objects are on different work planes. So uh, it doesn't really tell you that it's on a different work plane. Instead, it tells you it's on a different coordinate system. So the way you can fix this easily is to right click and say, plane by world, which I'm in my world plan view. It's going to set that plane to the world plan. And now with my 3D selector enabled, notice 3D selector properties is on, so I know this is the 3D selector. I can go to place on work plane, and now when I do this, it will work. And um, so let me just draw a 3D object here, like a box. And we'll just snap to these grid points here. And I'll go to my isometric view to make this a little more easy to see. So one of the options here when I right click is to show hide the work plane. This is also known as the user coordinate system. And um, as I'm drawing in TurboCAD, 2D objects are going to always draw on the current work plane. But what happens a lot is that, especially when you're working in 2D and 3D, you're going to uh, get your work plane in different areas. So now if I want to draw a circle on the side of this box, I can use the uh, uh, work plane by facet, highlight the side of the box, click it. And now the work plane is adjusted. Now when I draw my 2D object here, even if I use snaps, like snap to midpoint over here, it's still going to draw on that work plane. And so when you're, you've got to be careful when you're working with 2D and 3D objects that you know where your work plane is because it will actually change. And in fact, uh, it will change based on the type of selector mode you're in. So we've got the 3D selector enabled now. And if I go back to the 2D selector and select objects, notice what it's going to tell me here. Selecting the object in the 2D mode changes the drawing's work plane. And so what it's going to do I'll say yes to continue. It's going to change the work plane to the work plane that that 2D object was drawn on. So in this case, it's 
going to change it back to the side of this box. So you've got to you've got to understand uh, work planes and how they uh, work in conjunction with the selector tools. And uh, as you saw earlier from my attempt to trim the the two rectangles there, uh, if you do get your objects on different work planes, uh, the 2D modifier uh, tools will not work. So that's kind of a one of the more commonly uh, reported problems that people have where they don't understand why they're getting that error. Okay, um, the last thing I'm going to talk about is a couple more of the selector modes. Um, and you've seen me so far uh, select by uh, hitting the space bar, hitting the space bar, let me escape. Uh, well, I don't know what I've gone and done here. Uh, Oh. oh, well, there you go. Uh, the selector tool was actually not working because of my work plane here, so that was a little odd. Uh, let's change the work plane back to world, and now I'm selecting my objects here. Uh, that's because I was in the 2D selector. That's actually something I didn't realize would happen. <coughs> um, so now I'm uh, selecting objects just one at a time, and I can, as I referred to earlier, uh, use the plus minus indicator to deselect selected objects or select additional objects. So, um, but what I can also do with TurboCAD is I can select left to right or right to left, and there's differences with doing that. So I'm going to choose to select from left to right, and notice I get a little blue selection window. The selection window here is going to select anything that is. Uh, fully encompassing an object. So these two lines in the circle in this case should hi highlight and become selected. These other two lines where only a portion are selected will not. So doing uh, left to right will in, in any direction will uh, only select objects that are fully encompassed or enclosed within that rectangle. As opposed to the opposite direction, if I do right to left, I'm going to be able to select any object that uh, a portion of that selector window is touching. And again, uh, in both cases, if I hold the shift key down, uh, I can deselect or select additional objects. So right to left, anything that's touching, and left to right, anything that is not touching or uh, not fully uh, inside that window will be selected or deselected. Okay, well, um, that's pretty much all I had uh, planned to talk about. Um, we will try to open up the call window here for those of you who want to ask questions or otherwise uh, have something to talk about here. So let me um, try to unmute everybody. And um, I believe what you can do now is you can uh, go and unmute yourselves, but I'll just uh, unmute everybody who's still participating, and we'll see how that went for you. I, whoop, oh, sorry, Emma, I got rid of you accidentally. I apologize. Uh, hopefully you'll join back. Um, can anybody hear me? As, as uh, Hopefully you were able to hear everything I was talking about. Anybody still there? Let's see if anyone asked any questions. Let's try unmuting. Anybody there? Can you hear me? I hear you. Uh, oh. I hear you. Okay, hi. I probably should have checked in with you guys earlier, but I wanted to get through the whole whole thing there. Um, hopefully you saw and, and were able to understand most of what I was talking about. Okay, good. That's a good sign. And uh, do you have any questions? And, and by the way, who am I speaking with right now? <laughs> John. Oh, that's John Solomon. Hey, John, how's it going? <laughs> okay. I saw you sneak in there. So, uh, yeah. Um, uh, being that this is our second webinar, it's probably still a little bit rough around the edges, but uh, 
I think for the most part we uh, we we're getting there. Yeah, we didn't uh, have the video drop. It doesn't seem like we did last time when, once we got too many people in the room, and uh, so um, so yeah. Anybody else? Uh, Emma, I apologize for accidentally temporarily kicking you out. Um, are you still there? I was speaking with Emma earlier. Uh, anybody else feeling like uh, they want to say something? Have any feedback at all? Do you have any questions? Maybe people what are. Does seek, what does SEEK stand for? Yeah, SEEK stands for uh, Single Entry Keyboard Equivalent. So um, let's go back to TurboCAD for one second and I'll explain that again. So, uh, do you understand what snaps are? Yes. Okay, so I've got my snaps enabled. Uh, whenever you're in TurboCAD, uh, are you seeing TurboCAD on your screen now? Yes. Okay, so uh, whenever you're in TurboCAD, and let me uh, change my work plane so it's, um, make sure it's uh, on the world uh, plan view. Um, so s snaps are tools that allow you to draw accurately. So for instance, if I'm, if I'm just drawing and I'm panned out here and I, and I uh, think that I'm drawing on that end line, if I don't, on the end of this spline here. If I don't have my snaps enabled and I zoom in, uh, well, that hit the geo in that case. Let me undo that. So I'll do it again without geo or snaps enabled. And by the way, you can left click on these and, and enable them or disable them. So if I'm just drawing and I'm out here and I go, okay, I'm going to draw a line from the end of this spline here, chances are pretty high that at some point, um, if you zoom in far enough, the lines will not actually be snapped or, or be displaced from one another. One another. So <clears throat> um, what snaps allow me to do is, is uh, ensure that I'm going to draw accurately. I'm going to just highlight that and hit the delete key. And so in this case, uh, notice that because snaps are on, when I touch the spline here and I get close enough to the endpoint, it's going to let me know that, hey, that's a, that's a valid snap point. And so when I draw there, uh, I, I can come in and sure enough, uh, it's, it's going to be on the endpoint of that line. So what the seeks allow me to do is actually work uh, independent of whether the snaps are on or not. And um, in this case, they're off, so I want to do the same procedure. I want to snap to the endpoint of that line. I'm going to, or the spline. So I'm going to take my line tool and, as it's enabled, touch the spline here. And as I get uh, to the endpoint or near that endpoint, and actually I can be pretty far off, and hit the V key. Well, I wasn't close enough in this case. I uh, hit the V key. Uh, hit the hit the V key here. Uh, sure enough. Uh, it's going to snap to the endpoint of that um, of that uh, line there. So let me do that again. Uh, looks like I had a, another little line drawn there, so that was part of the problem. Let me get rid of that. So again, uh, line tool. I want to snap to the vertice of the of the spline. I can hit the V key, and uh, if I'm close enough to the endpoint in this case, I will be able to snap there. Let me just uh, see why maybe it's wasn't uh, <clears throat> uh, it's a bezier and so uh, it might be a little bit different. Let me try a different uh, geometry here. It'll probably make it a little easier to understand. So in the case of a rectangle, a lot more simple geometry. Uh, again, I'll take the line tool and anytime I place the cursor on this line, even if snaps are disabled and hit the V key, it's going to snap to the nearest vertice. If I'm down closer to the bottom one, it's going to snap to that. Um, Vertice. If I'm in the mid, uh, if I'm on the line and I want to snap to the midpoint, I, the seek for that is M for midpoint, and it will snap exactly to the midpoints as I'm touching the rectangle that I'm snapping to. Right. So if I want to do it on the side, midpoint there to midpoint there. Uh, actually, I hit N by accident. So M for midpoint. Even if I'm up here, I hit M, it's going to snap and that's going to be exactly on the midpoint of this rectangle. If I highlight the rectangle and see the bounding box, uh, the endpoints for this line that I've drawn are going to be snapped exactly to the precise location based on the seek that I was using. Okay, so there's, uh, just to remind you, if you go to help and keyboard and go down to the listing down here where it says mode snap um, starting from here down to here these are the the primary seeks that you'll be making use of 
Mm. Okay. Um, and I, I think uh, I think these are very powerful tools. I would uh, get in the habit of s s learning them right away because you'll you'll definitely increase your speed and productivity in TurboCAD by by learning them and making use of them. Okay. And uh, who was that, by the way, asking that yeah. question? Ed. Hi. Um, okay. Uh, any more questions on on Seeks or any other things, Ed? And what is Geo next to the snap? Sure. Let me explain that. So uh, if we go to the snap modes and we um, see down here, there's geometric aids. Okay, so we've got a parent inter uh, extended ortho and a parent intersection. And um, if I just highlight the, uh, turn those on, now when I draw a line, um, what I should get eventually are some of the, um, sometimes they take a second to invoke, um, especially if you don't, there's an option to have them all on. I prefer to have this turned off because it starts really messing with the ability to, uh, work, especially if you've got a lot of objects on your screen. But uh, once you start getting them to um, display, notice that extended ortho is going to let me draw a line now exactly uh, a parallel to this line. So uh, as I put my cursor here, I know that, that this line is going to be exactly straight. If I snap from V to V, this should be a straight line, and sure enough, it is. So uh, that's, that's the extended or, uh, ortho mode. And then we've got uh, parent intersection modes as well. So let's um, let me turn on my snap here for midpoint. Okay, and let's say we want to draw midpoint from this line to midpoint uh, from this line here. So I'm going to go like this, and then here. And notice the icon uh, next to my cursor is uh, the one for the uh, extended uh, apparent intersection. And so now when I click there, click here, go like that, and uh, be uh, uh, M and V here. This should be a, a perfectly uh, 90 degree um, angle. And in fact, if I want to take my boom. So, um, so the so just to recap, the extended and ortho, uh, extended ortho and apparent intersection, or what we refer to as geometric aids, that's what the word geo means, and then these snap modes are all the, all above it. Um, and uh, yeah, any other questions? Don't be shy. <laughs> Thanks for the questions, Ed. Ed, uh, uh, I don't know how much of the presentation you caught, but uh, I would also just want to remind you and everybody else uh, to become a member of the TurboCAD forum if you're not already a member. Uh, you'll get uh, you'll get valuable information and help from guys such as John Salman, who is also the gentleman that uh, maintains our wiki site, which I discussed a little bit earlier as well. So. Um, yeah. Any other questions? It's your opportunity to uh, to ask questions and and get some some free help. I think somebody. Yep. Uh, no. Anybody else? Uh, if you're not able to talk uh, in your mic, uh, you can also type a question in the chat room. So. Please feel free. Anybody else? Okay. Um, well, if no one else has any questions, I will um, stop the recording and stop the webinar. And I thank you very much for participating today. Um, we do can we will um, continue to have these presentations. Um, and I do plan to take this video and post it on YouTube. Um, so if you want to review what we talked about today, um, I should be able to get that up there this afternoon. 
Um, again, our YouTube page is a is a great pay, place for um, learning about TurboCAD as well. So, um, if that's it, anybody else? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Dwayne. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And um, again, we will uh, iron out some of the roughness here as this was our second webinar and probably a little bit uh, confusing for you guys to join. Um, <clears throat> but uh, you're very welcome. And I'll say... Thank you. Yeah. Oh, there you are. <laughs> very good. Okay. Well, um, thanks very much and uh, enjoy TurboCAD. It's a fantastic application and uh, uh, I hope you found this uh, uh, helpful in your learning curve. Thanks very much, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dave.